Welcome to the lecture series for comprehensive learning an understanding of the engineering behavior of ground and the interaction between the ground and any structure built in or on the ground is essential for all civil engineers. So with this code I start the geotechnical engineering lecture series. Myself Ankita, faculty from Department of Civil Engineering, Price College of Engineering and this is our first video. Here comes the first question. Soil transported by wind is called and the options are colluvial soil, alluvial soil, lacustrine soil, aeolian soil. Soil is formed by weathering of solid rocks and it can be either mechanical weathering or chemical weathering and the soil obtained due to this weathering process may be residual soil or transported soil. So what is a residual soil? It is formed by weathering of rocks but the soil will be located at the place of origin itself and it can be formed from rocks like granite, basalt, sandstone and limestone and the examples are sand, silt, clay etc. Now what is transported soil? These are soils which are carried away by the force of wind, ice, water and gravity. So any of this can play the role and based on that it can be again categorized. So colluvial soil is the one transported by gravitational force. Alluvial soil is a soil transported by running water. Lacustrine soil is the soil deposited at the bottom of lakes. Aeolian soil is the one transported by wind. Glacier soil or glacier drift or simply drift is the soil transported by glaciers and it can be either by the ice or by the water formed due to melting of these glaciers. And the accumulation of decaying vegetable matter under moisture conditions may cause the formation of peat, it's a cumulus soil. So with this description we can sort, uh, we can find out the answer for the question soil transported by wind is called and the answer is option D aeolian soil. Question 2 if the pores in a soil are completely filled with air only then the soil is said to be and the options are wet soil, dry soil, fully saturated soil, partially saturated soil. So this can be well explained with the help of a three phase system of soil. So soil mass can be considered as a three phase system and it consists of solid particles that is the soil particle or the soil grains and void particle void area the void area is a free space in between the soil particles and this voids can be either filled with air or it can be filled with water so based on this we can differentiate it as partially saturated soil fully saturated soil or dry soil so if the soil mass is having both water and air if the voids are filled with wo both water and air it is partially saturated soil and if it is full of water if the voids are full of water it is fully saturated condition and if there is no water in the void and the entire voids are filled with air only then it is a dry soil and the phase diagram is an important concept some uh, important technical terms in soil mechanics are also related to this representation and uh, here we represent volume towards the right side and weight on the left side of the phase diagram and the volume uh, or the weight of air water and both together are, is called are called is called void and the solids so this can be represented like this so coming to the answer if the pores in the soil are completely filled with air only then the soil is said to be answer is option b dry soil moving on to the question three ratio of volume of voids 
so the total volume of soil mass is called in the options are water content void ratio porosity degree of saturation so let's see some of the technical terms that are widely used this one is water content water content is the ratio of weight of water to the weight of solids in a given soil mass and it is usually expressed as a percentage so mathematically if you are expressing it it will be like weight of water weight of water to the weight of solids into 100 that will give you the water content and if instead of weights if the corresponding masses are known we can just substitute with masses and that is shown here next term is void ratio and it is represented by letter e void ratio is a ratio of total volume of voids to the volume of soil solids in a given soil mass that is volume of voids to the volume of soil solids solid particles in a given soil mass the soil mass can be represented as a three phase system it is having air it may be having air water and the solid particles that is a soil particle so void ratio is ratio of the total volume of voids to the volume of soil solids in a given soil mass next is porosity porosity of a soil mass is represented by small letter n and it is the ratio of volume of voids to the total volume of the given soil mass so mathematically it can be represented like volume of voids divided by total volume of the given soil mass next is degree of saturation represented by the letter s degree of saturation of a soil mass is the ratio of the volume of water present in a given soil mass to the total volume of voids in that so mathematically it is volume of water divided by volume of voids vw divided by vv and for a fully saturated soil mass the voids will be fully filled with water so the numerator and denominator will be the same it will be equal and the degree of saturation is 1 that is 100 percentage saturated and if it is a perfectly dry soil mass if it is perfectly dry soil mass the volume of water in that will be 0 so the ratio becomes 0 that is s is equal to 0 degree of saturation is 0 next is percentage air voids it is the ratio of volume of air voids to the total volume of the soil mass va divided by v and it is expressed as percentage so just multiply with 100 in order to get the value and next is air content air content it is the ratio of volume of air voids to the volume of voids va divided by v so with this we can see the answer is c ratio of volume of voids to the total volume of soil mass is called porosity coming to question number 4 the ratio of mass of solids to the total volume of the soil in moist condition is known as the options are bulk density moist density dry density and saturated density so let's see each of these in detail what is bulk density it is represented by the symbol rho 
and bulk density is the mass of soil divided by total volume of the soil mass so that is m divided by v and what is dry density it is represented by rho d it is equal to the mass of solids divided by total volume of soil and represented as ms divided by v so instead of mass of soil we are considering only the mass of solids and that is the dry density next is density of solids so if you are considering only the solids if you are talking about a particular solid particle what is its density that is rho s that is of the solid particle that is uh, equal to mass of solids divided by volume of solid simple equation for as we uh, mentioned for density simple equation mass of solids divided by volume of solids that is the density of solids and that is different from dry density and bulk density dry density in dry density we are considering the mass of solids out of the total volume of soil and in bulk density we are considering the mass of soil out of the total volume of soil okay the next is saturated density it is equal to the total mass of fully saturated soil divided by total volume of soil and it is represented by rho sat and next is submerged or buoyant density it is equal to the submerged mass of soil solids divided by total volume of soil and these are all about densities various definitions for the densities and if you are talking about unit weights in a similar way we can represent the equations instead of density we will just replace it with unit weight and instead of mass we can write in terms of weight again uh, the equations are comparable instead of mass we are using weight and instead of rho we are writing gamma uh, notation and the units are different densities we represent usually in kilogram per meter cube and unit weight is represented in kilo newton per meter cube and if you observe water what is the density of water it is 1000 kilogram per meter cube and unit weight 9.81 kilo newton per meter cube so what is our question ratio of mass of solids to the total volume of soil mass of solids to the total volume of soil so the answer is option c dry density and question number 5 ratio of unit weight of soil solids to the unit weight of water is called and the options are dry density specific gravity mass specific gravity and void ratio so among these options we know what is dry density and void ratio so what is specific gravity and what is mass specific gravity so we may get confused between these two options with these two options so let's see what is the specific gravity specific gravity of soil solids and it is usually represented by the letter g capital g it is a ratio of unit weight of soil solids to the unit weight of water and it is g is equal to gamma s divided by gamma w that is the unit weight of soil solids that soil particle unit weight of soil particle divided by unit weight of water that is specific gravity and what is mass specific gravity it is denoted by gm gm it is the ratio of unit weight of given soil mass to the unit weight of water so that makes a difference it is also known as apparent or bulk specific gravity so gm is equal to gamma divided by gamma w gamma is the unit weight of given soil mass so if uh, if it is not mentioned we shall denote the specific gravity usually as uh, we can denote the specific gravity as specific gravity of soil solids that is g 
so uh, coming to the question ratio of unit weight of soil solids to the unit weight of water is called answer is option b specific gravity and thank you so much for watching the first video in the lecture series